You are listening to Sports Talk with Carter Williams. Carter Williams. Sports Talk. Only on Power 91. KSU. Anyway, we have another soccer guest on right now, and that would be Mo Bridge of the soccer team. Oh, what's up? <laughs> oh, there we go. Cool. There we go. <laughs> Having already technical issues here. <laughs> now, the team's off to a great start. We just talked to Charlie. Two one and one already this season. What's different about this team than you know the last year, maybe even the last two years? Like Charlie said, like the team's coming together and everybody wants it. But I think it's the passion at practice and the feel that if you know, like we have this thing where if everybody, like if one team gets like loses and they have to do push-ups, the whole team's gonna do it with them because we all we all want to get better. And I feel like we're all trying to be the best soccer players we can. Now. I just love the fact that you take all these photos of all the crazy <laughs> happenings that happen, on especially these road trips. And, and road trips, especially Summit League with Summit League teams, can always be, you know, irritating. It could be terrible because, like, especially with the Summit League, when you're traveling to places like North Dakota, <laughs> South Dakota, you know, all these places in the Midwest, it's a long travel, like, it's got to be nice to just relax and just have fun every once in a while, right? Yeah, I feel like the team kind of thinks I'm a creeper because even when they're not looking, I'll be, like, snapping photos of them. Oh but yeah, I, I really love my team, and I love all their personalities. But, yeah, traveling to North Dakota and South Dakota, and especially having to drive to Vegas to fly out, it gets tiring, but I think we all make it fun because, <laughs> you know, we've got Shelby Osler who wouldn't want to travel with Shelby, and everybody else on the team has just great personalities, so it is a really good, it's a good time. I'm going to ask you this, and then I'm going to say what my favorite story that I've heard of oh. of oh. the team. <laughs> what is your favorite traveling story you have ever had with T-Bird Soccer in the two and now starting third year of being with the team? Probably when Jessa got left behind. Is that what you were thinking? Yes, that's yeah. the one I was thinking. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, when Jessa... That is yeah. the greatest story. <laughs> Let's hear it from you since you were actually there. Okay, so this girl, Jessa Yukihiro, she used to play on our team. Uh, she transferred to back to California after her first year. Uh, we were traveling. Oh, I can't remember where we were going, but we were driving to Vegas to fly out, and we're all on the bus, and she had to use the facilities. And so she was like, does anybody have to you know, use the facilities with me? And nobody raised their hand, and so she just left. And... We're driving on the freeway, and, well, we're driving on the freeway, and all of a sudden we look outside the bus, and there's a girl in a van waving us down, and we're like, wait, that that's Jessa. Like, <laughs> we got to stop the bus, and we're on the freeway. And so I guess the story is that she went to the bathroom, came back out, and the bus was, like, driving off, and so she ran after it and couldn't catch up to it and <laughs> just knocked on some guy's door on a, in a van creepily. And was like, that's my bus, take me there. And he was such a sport and put her in the van and drove her to the bus. <laughs> I can see that backfiring in so yeah, many ways. Yeah, so many <laughs> ways. <laughs> yeah. The creeper van of the guy. Yeah. It's like, all oh, right, it's got to be easier yeah. than this. Come take on. me to- I know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I heard that story because at that time, Jessa was actually in my statistics class. And she had told me the entire <laughs> story, and I just, I, I couldn't believe it at first. So I had to get, like, I had to go over to practice one day and ask to see if it actually happened. And they're like, yeah, it happened. Yeah, that's one of those stories where you're like, uh, that's a lie. No, it was true. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> How was the trip this past weekend? You guys went to northern Arizona yep. for the Invitational there, picked up a win and then a tie. Uh, how was the how was the trip there? It seemed like it was a lot of fun from the photos that you had. It's a lot of fun for me because I I could be in a like in a car all day. I love traveling, but um, it was <laughs> it's Flagstaff is an amazing town. They it's so beautiful and we're lucky enough to get to go see it. So I think taking advantage of like the scenery on the way there and like Kanab is beautiful if you don't look at it from living. I mean, I couldn't live there, but looking at it from an outside point oh of view, it <laughs> looks awesome. But uh, yeah, I loved it. I love traveling. You, you said you couldn't live there. Why, why is that? Are you just a big town person? Why are you here in Cedar? I love <laughs> Sandy. Like I would live in. I'll live in Sandy for the rest of my life. But I, it's nice to go to college here. I like it here. But I'm a Sandy girl. <laughs> Sandy all the way. Yeah, <laughs> Sandy land. Yeah, I I have to admit it's also a little weird first time you actually are living in a small town and you wake up and 
look out the window and you're like, holy crap, there's a lot of space out there. Yeah. You know, it's kind of <laughs> kind of weird when it comes to that. Uh, now with your photography, I have to say, I'm a big fan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, awesome photography stuff. Do you have a Flickr account at all? Yes, I just got it for my photojournalism class, but there's not a lot up there, so don't go check it out oh, right okay. now. I'll check it out later. <laughs> yes, for all you listeners out there yeah. you got to check it out somehow maybe facebook yeah. stalker or something add me on facebook mo bridge i'll, I'll accept it <laughs> <laughs> i'll accept it as long as you like it's good criticism yeah right? <laughs> now what got you into photography are you a photography major com major i believe i'm a com major in advertising uh my mom Always had a fo- had a, always had a camera at my games, and I loved her photography. And I w- would always critique her. And one day she was getting really mad at me because I was like, "Mom, you gotta take better pictures." Like, <laughs> oh my sometimes goodness. I'm blurry, sometimes like I don't have the ball, and like we always tease each other about it. But she was like, "Well, you go buy your own dang camera." And I was like, "Well, she said something." But oh I was boy. like, "Oh yeah, well let me go, go do that. Let me go spend some money on that." And I did, and it was totally worth it. Like. I go back and look at her pictures and see what I can do better because she was, I mean, she wasn't a professional photographer, but she was really good. So yeah, I, I like c- it a lot. I can understand through that aspect. I, it was something, you know, I started writing. I'm like, this is a lot of fun. But then it started to like, hey, I'd like to take photos of games. Yeah. And eventually to broadcasting games and stuff like that. And it's hard. And some of the sports, I'll, we'll have to get you started on shooting some of these sports because I know that's one of the assignments anyway in that class as a graduate of that class <laughs> uh, that you'll end up having to shoot sports indoor and outdoor. So the indoor one, it, it's easy. I think it's easier to do outdoor in a way because the lighting and everything. But indoor is when it, you know you. That's where I have to like follow around Asher Swan, who's the art editor at the University Journal and see what kind of settings he used. He was gone the entire volleyball tournament. So I was shooting all those photos and I was literally, it took me two and a half games to like mess around this with the settings until I got the one that I actually wanted. And it's gotta be like that, right? You know, like when you're, when you're taking photos, you know, it's it takes time to, to get used to a camera, get used to settings and stuff. Have you had any issues with that? Yeah, like, same sort of thing when I was trying to, I was uh, taking photographs of the men's volleyball team one time, and I could not get the settings right, and, you know, I have this 365 days of photos things where I take a photo every day, and it's kind of just to see what my camera can do and what I can do, and, you know, it's just like, I got to be creative, you know, I don't want everyone to see the same picture every day, so I had to find a creative way to take shots, and it kind of, you know, helps a lot. And that's one other thing that I was going to mention. It's like, I think anybody can be, I, I, anybody can be a photographer. It's not like it's a gift or anything. But the gift in photography is to have the eye for stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I noticed is like each one, there's just like this different creativity level to it. It could be just as simple as taking a photo of a note, which is actually pretty funny. <laughs> My mom sent me a letter yesterday and that's what it <laughs> It says thanks for oh, wait see does that say thanks yeah thanks for the great weekend do good in school don't kiss the boys random advice <laughs> random advice <laughs> and then there was the debate following whether or not that's good advice yeah for my sister then you had one as warm-ups were happening and stacy brinkman taking the lead in that warm-up race yeah ashley our trainer actually took that some of them some you know of them are. some of them my like family or somebody else has to take because I want them to see, like, in the game and stuff like that. But it's, I yeah. just pick out some great photos that they take. Yeah, I, w- I was thinking, because you have one of those headbands. Yes. And to just implant, like, a camera on it and have that happen. but It'd be a dream. It really would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Coach would agree with me on no. that one. <laughs> we have this one. This is Christine Meehan. That's one of the freshmen, correct? Yes. And it's awesome. I like this one a lot, too. Where it's it's the idea issue. Nice advertising. See, so look at you and you're <laughs> Love connecting the advertising <laughs> yeah. and the photo on this one with the Adidas cleat that has impossible is nothing. Nothing is impossible, depending on which way you're looking at it. And then in the background, you see her smiling, holding up the cleat. That's a nice one. I like this one, Lake at the Hill. 
<laughs> nice. Yeah, black and white. My friend Brandy Hillock. She we went to the lake and you know she's just a she doesn't care if I take photos of her. <laughs> so it was perfect. The redneck ones. <laughs> now you're a self-described redneck, correct? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, my uh, my friend sent me a picture of that because I love my camouflage jacket, and it says you might be a redneck if your most expensive jacket is camouflage, which defines my family pretty much. <laughs> now this is another one that I really, really like. This Mustang photo. You got the logo of the Mustang, and then you can kind of see the car in the background in black and white. What, like, when you see these things, what starts you, like, to say, hey, I want to take a photo of this, or what is it that does that? I saw this car every morning during training camp when we were going to get taped and going to treatment before practice, and one day I had my camera because, you know, I should take it everywhere with me, and I was like, dang, I really like this Mustang, and this is the exact Mustang that my mom had once, and so I was like, oh, she might like that photo, and I had a photo of the front of it, but this one turned out a lot better. We have you hugging Missy. That's the NAU game. Yes. Oh, what's this going on here? We got Rachel Krenzer. It's like she's smiling right at the person in front of her, <laughs> although they're not actually seeing. It actually reminds me, and we talked a little bit about Shelby. And the one thing I always joke with Shelby is, like, at the end of the year, she'll always ask, hey, can I get some photos so we can print them out? Mother's Day gift, stuff like that. And I always say, I think you like. There's a thousand different. If I had a thousand photos of you, you would have a thousand different expressions on your face, in each one. And there was one, and this kind of reminds me of it that a former uh, photographer at the Journal took, where Shelby had scored a goal, and it looks like she's pointing and laughing at the opposing goal. Yes, she's oh. like, "Oh, I can't believe I missed that." <laughs> That's what and I think of. This is a nice one. It's Missy, and talk about this. I, I this is what I want to know. Missy Lascano off to a great start. Oh my, this she's year. on fire. Is that getting to her head a little bit? Do you have to knock oh, her down no. a bit? Oh no, not at all. Like she's probably one of the hardest workers on our team. She's always in a practice. I love when we're on opposite teams because I feel like I'm getting better when I'm playing against her. She's always wanting to go hard, and it's awesome. But she is a scoring machine, and I love it, especially when she scores off my crosses. As a, as a midfielder slash kind of, you know, in the middle of that role, uh, what is your job when it comes to connecting? Because it, it seems like a lot of, like, despite the last two years, I, it seemed like there was a lot of, you know, offense struggling kind of thing. But this year, high-octane offense, what is it different this year with that? And what are you doing to, to help in that high-octane offense? Well, the center middies are doing a really good job of uh, connecting with each other and playing off each other. And us as outside backs, we are being able to get up because they're sending us the ball. And so it's really nice to be able to get the ball at our feet and do something with it. And everybody's focusing on finding feet and playing with each other and picking off passes. It's just going great. I love getting in the offense. Uh, This season, uh, where do you see this season, you know, in the next couple of days? Like, where do you see this team? Is this going to continue? This high octane offense, do you see this, like, continuing? Is this a long-term thing? Yeah, I think the people are loving to score goals. They're liking, you know, they're actually wanting to get the ball and get it in the back of the net, and I feel like that's going to just keep going up, and we're going to keep improving and improving. You're listening to Power 91 KSU.